Let's get started on building our Ruby product. We'll be using Grape, but we're also going to be using several different tools to fulfill our requirements. We're going to build a very simple file uploader. We want to upload files as a user, and we want to download them later on. First and foremost, we'll need to set up our project structure in the file system. I'm already inside a project, and I'm just going to create a couple of folders and files. Let's start with the folders. I'm going to use the mkdir command in OS X in Linux, and I'm going to create the test folder, which is very important. I'm going to create the lib directory, which will contain all of our application files, such as models, the application itself, and views, for example. And finally, we're also going to contain a public folder to store all of our files. Inside the lib folder, I'm also going to create a models folder and a views folder, so lib slash views. These folders will be the main skeleton of our application. So let's just press enter. You can see that if I type in ls, you will see the three different folders on top. And if I go to the lib folder, you can see models in views. So all of the folders are created. Let's jump into the files we need to use. First of all, I'm going to consider the main configuration files for our application. I'll create the config.recup file. This will serve as the main point of entry to spawn our rack application. Grip sits on top of rack, so this will be more than valid. Let's also create a gem file to store our dependencies and a rake file. This will register the task task for now. Pressing enter, you will see all of these files. There you go. Let's go ahead and open the gem file. The gem file should contain a source location, so I'll just type in that, https rubygems.org. From this source, we're going to install several different dependencies. The first one should be, of course, grape, since we'll be exploring this tool. And then I'm going to create a group called test so that we can set up our test environment properly. After all, the following gems would only be suitable in the test environment. So I'll start by typing in the mini test gem and also rack test. Let's go ahead and type in the require option because we need to require rack test like this. This is useful if you want to have a specific gem, but when requiring it, it requires a different string other than the gem. So you type in require colon and then the string that you need to require. For now, this is all we need. We're going to complement this gem file later on with different gems. First and foremost, let's type in the bundle command so that we can install all of our dependencies so far. Okay, now that we have the gem file, we can go ahead to the rig file and create a configuration to run our tests. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to require rig slash test task. This will allow me to register a new rig test task like this. So I can just type in the new command to instantiate a new task, pass in a block with an argument that will contain the configuration that we need. I'll type in t.pattern first because I want to specify the pattern to find the tests. The pattern is test slash double star and then star underscore test.rb. This means that every test will be inside the test folder recursively and it will end in underscore test.rb. This will allow us to have many different files inside the test folder without actually being tests. So every test will finish like this. Let's move on to include some lib folders. So I'm going to inject the lib folder and the test folder. This will allow us to require everything inside lib and also everything inside test, like the test helper. Let's go ahead and save this. And all we need to do now is we need to configure the rackup file. The rackup file will include the app class and run it. So what we're going to do is we're going to the path variable specified by dollar colon, and we're going to unshift a new entry into this array. Dollar colon is an array of many different paths that make up for Ruby's load path. So what I'm going to do is type in file.expand path, then the current folder you type a double set of dots so that we can reference the directory I'm in inside config.ru. 
and I'll make it relative to this very file. So we want the parent directory of this file. And we're going to inject the full directory using file.expand path and inject it into the load path. This will make an entry like slash home slash my user, then projects slash Ruby slash my project. Let's just call it grape. And this should be the full path that is going to be injected into the Ruby load path. That's what this instruction does. So let me just remove this comment. And finally, I'm going to require an app file, rather lib slash app file. And finally, run API double colon app. We are going to create a namespace called API. And the class will be under this namespace. It is going to be called app. For now, that's all we need to do. I believe we have a mistake here. We are inside the lib directory with all of these files. And that's not exactly what we want. Let me just go up a folder. And I'm going to move all of these files back into the root of the project. And there you go, much better. Like I've mentioned, the config.recup file contains this namespace and this class. Let's create it. We need to go to the lib folder and create a new app file. So app.rb. And then I'm going to create a very simple class inside a module called API. And then class app, which will inherit from grape double colon API. Let's close everything. And this should be good to go. But there's one thing that we're still missing. And that is requiring every single dependency in the gem file. How are we going to solve this problem? Well, I'm going to create a new env.rb file. And I'm going to require bundler. And I'm going to type in bundler.require. This will require all of the gems inside the gem file, but without any specific group. So I'm just going to do that. And let's just for the sake of the example, require everything inside the production group, in case we need that. There's also one thing that we need to do. And that is to go to the test helper and populate it. We're going to need to require bundler, then typing in bundler.require the same way as we are doing in the env.rb file. And then finally, bundler.require test. We want to make sure we require all of the gems inside the test group. So after requiring everything in the test group, we're going to require mini test slash auto run. Now that I mention it, we should go to the gem file here and quickly type in require false. This way, mini test won't be loaded automatically when typing in bundler.require. That way we can manually require mini test slash auto run. We don't need to require it twice. And for now, this looks good to me. Let's see if I can type in the rate command. If I do it, you can see that we have an error because we don't have the default task. If I type in rake test, this should work. There you go. The command works successfully. Never mind that warning. Let's just move ahead. What I want to finally do is go to the rake file and establish the default task. So the fault will be test. Remember, this test task creates a new task called test. You assign the default task to that one. And so if I type in rake now, as you see at the bottom of the screen, it will run rake test. Okay, that's great. We have a test suite working. Let's make sure we create one single test. So I'll create a file called hello underscore test.rb. And I'm going to describe a simple hello world test. So hello, pass in a block, and I'm going to type in a test called it asserts something. This is just to make sure that the test will run. So let me just type in assert false so that it actually throws an error. Remember, we'll need to require test helper first. So let me just do that. Let's save and run the tests. I'm just going to use a mapping that I have in Vim that will simply run rake. So let's do that. And there you go. There's our first test failing. I can go ahead and switch this to true. And the test should pass now. There you go. The test suite is working. Now let's do one final test. And that is to let me just quit everything. I'm going to save this and quit the entire editor. And I'm going to type in recup config dot This will spawn a new server. Oh, let's see what we have here. We need to include 
the grape API. So let's go to config.brew and also require lib slash env. This way it should work. Let's see. I'm going to lib and we have the env folder here. And this is requiring every single gem in the gem file. So this should work. Let me just open a new tab and type in backup config.brew once again. There you go. We have a new server up and running. And if I actually want to go here to a separate pane, I can type in curl and visit that URL. If I go straight to the root path, it will give me a 404. We don't have any route whatsoever in the application. That's why we get a 404 response here. And the text that you see here is exactly not found. It's just to match the status code. Okay, so with that being said, let's jump into the next lesson where we'll start developing our first feature, and that is uploading a file. I'll see you soon.